that was my, my conclusion from yesterday. I, I couldn't understand most of what was going on, and yet I had the feeling I was learning a lot. <laughs> now, <laughs> I, I'll have some remarks about Colin, and then some remarks about the few things that, that I noticed yesterday that I could understand. I, I certainly agree with Colin about, I, I think it's a lovely idea that if, if you have a mass of data and, uh, and you use deep learning, you will find out much more than your theory in general. And I, I would hope that machine learning can be a source of hypotheses. That is that some of these variables that you identify are genuinely interesting. Uh, at least in my field, the bar for successful publishable science is very low. We consider theories confirmed even when they explain very little of the variance, if they, are, they yield statistically significant predictions. We treat the residual variance as noise, and a deeper look into uh, the residual variance, which machine learning is good at, uh, is clearly an advantage. So, as an outsider, actually, I have been surprised not to hear more about that, about the superiority of AI to what people can do. Perhaps as a psychologist, this is what interests me most. Now, I'm not sure that new signals will always be interesting, but I suppose that some may lead to new theory, and that would be useful. Now, I don't really fully agree with Colin's second idea that, that it's useful to view human intelligence as a weak version of artificial intelligence. Uh, there certainly uh, there are similarities, and certainly you can model some of human overconfidence in that way, but I do think that the, the processes that occur in human judgment are really quite different, the processes that produce overconfidence. Now, uh, I left myself time for some remarks of my own on what I learned yesterday. And one of the recurrent issues, both in talks and uh, in conversations, was whether AI can eventually do whatever people can do. And you know, will there be anything that is reserved for human beings? And frankly, I don't see any reason to set limits on what AI can do. We have in our heads you know, a, a wonderful computer. Uh, it's made of meat, but it, it's but it's a computer. It's extremely noisy. It does parallel processing. It is extraordinarily efficient. But uh, you know, there is no magic there. And so it's very difficult to imagine that with sufficient data, uh, you know, there will remain things that you know, only humans can do. Now, the reason that we see so many limitations, I think, is that this field is really at the very beginning. I mean, we are talking of a development, you know, deep learning that took off. Uh, I mean, the idea is old, but the development took off uh, eight years ago, so that's the the sort of landmark date that people are mentioning. And that's nothing. You know, you have, to, you, have, you have to imagine what it might be like in 50 years. Because the one thing that I find extraordinarily surprising and interesting in what is happening in AI these days is that everything is happening faster than was expected. So people were saying that it will take 10 years for AI to beat Go. And the interesting thing is it took eight months. So this, this uh, excess of speed at which the thing is developing and accelerating, I think, uh, is very remarkable. So setting limits is, is certainly premature. Uh, one point that was made yesterday was about the uniqueness of humans uh, when it comes to evaluations. Uh, it was called judgment here. Uh, in my jargon, uh, it's evaluation, evaluation of outcomes, and basically the utility side of 
uh, the, the decision function. And I really don't see why that should be reserved to humans. On the contrary, I mean, I'd like to make the following argument. Uh, people, the main characteristic of people is that they're very noisy. You show them the same stimulus twice, they don't give you the same response twice. You show the same choice twice. I mean, that's why we have stochastic choice theory, because uh, there is so much variability in people's choices uh, given, the same, uh, given the same stimuli. Now, what can be done with AI, it can be done even without AI, is a program that observes in an individual's choices will be better than the individual at a wide variety of things. In particular, it will make better choices for the individual by, because it will be noise free. And it will, that we know uh, from the literature that Colin uh, cited on the literature from Neil and on, on predictions. There's an interesting tidbit. If you take uh, clinicians and you have them predict some criterion a, a large number of time, and then you develop a simple equation that predicts not the outcome, but the clinician's judgment. That model does better in predicting the outcome than the clinician himself. That is fundamental. This is telling you that one of the major limitations on, uh, on human performance is not bias, it is just noise. And I'm you know, uh, I'm maybe partly responsible for this, but people now when they talk about error tend to think of bias as an explanation. That's the first thing that comes to mind. Well, uh, this, is, this is a bias and it is an error. Uh, and in fact, most of the errors that people make are better viewed as random noise. And there's an awful lot of it. And, and admitting the essence of noise means something, it has implications for practice. And one implication is obvious, that you should replace humans by algorithms whenever possible. And this is really happening. Uh, even when the algorithms don't do very well, humans do so poorly and are so noisy that just by removing the noise, you can do better than people. And the other is that when you can't do it, you try to have humans simulate the algorithm. And that idea by, by enforcing regularity and processes and discipline on judgment and on choice, you improve, you reduce the noise and you improve performance because noise is so poisonous. Now, uh, Jan LeCun said yesterday that humans would always prefer emotional contact with, with other humans. That strikes me as probably wrong. Uh, the, <laughs> It is extremely easy to develop stimuli to which people will respond emotionally. A face, a, an expressive face, a face that changes expressions, that will buy people, ex especially if it's sort of baby shaped. I mean, you know, so there are cues that will make people feel very emotional. Robots will have these cues. Furthermore, they, it is already the case that AI reads faces better than people do and, can, and undoubtedly by, will be able to predict uh, emotions and development in emotions far better than people can. And I really can imagine that one of the major uses of robots will be taking care of the old uh, because I can imagine that many old people will prefer to be taken care of by robots, by friendly robots that have a name, that have a personality, that are always pleasant. They will prefer that uh, to being taken care of by their children. <laughs> now, uh, I want to end on, on a story. A well-known novelist, I don't, I'm not sure he would appreciate my giving his name, uh, wrote me some time ago uh, that he's planning a novel. And in the novel is about a love triangle between two humans and a robot. 
And uh, what he wanted to know is, how would the robot be different from the individuals? And I, I proposed three main differences. Now, one is obvious. The robot will be much better at statistical reasoning and less enamored with stories and narratives than people are. Uh, the other is that the robot would have much higher emotional intelligence. And the third is that the robot would be wiser. And wisdom is breadth. Wisdom is not having too narrow a view. That's the essence of wisdom. It's broad framing. And a robot will be endowed with broad framing, and I really do not see when it has learned enough, it will be wiser than we people because we don't have broad framing. We are narrow thinkers, we are noisy thinkers. It's very easy to improve upon us. And I, I don't think that th there is very much that we can do that computers can, will not eventually be programmed to do. Thank you.